anybody thinks I love the Beatles for them, and I'll always love them, even when I'm 105 year old grandmother. Every generation has its boyish musical heartthrobs. Elvis, JT, MJ, Bieber, Springsteen, Kurt. Handsome icons sold to teeny boppers is a tried and true method of musical promotion. And while some may prefer the androgynous appeal of the space cowboy David Bowie, or the pristine prettiness of the K-pop boy band BTS, or even the hairspray-fumed Bon Jovi, there is one musician in history that is the undisputed champion of manly good looks. A musician so handsome, he makes Bieber look like meatloaf turns Elvis into Skrillex. His name was Franz Liszt, and he started a craze known as Listomania. Franz Liszt comes from the appropriately named Romantic Era of Music. He was one among a long list of European musical prodigies, performing and even composing at a young age. In addition to his talent, he quickly grew up to be quite the handsome specimen. Writer Hans Christian Andersen noted his slimness and his dark hair, which hung around his pale face. I mean, just look at him. He also performed with quite the swagger. Because of this, even at an early age, Liszt had many admirers. In 1833, he began an affair with an uppity countess, who would eventually leave her husband and family to mother a few of her own children with Liszt. His charm wouldn't end just there. When Liszt began a musical tour across Europe, a fervor spread, what would come to be known as Listomania. In short, young ladies went wild. His fans would come to his performances in mobs, fighting over anything he had touched. From handkerchiefs to gloves, his locks of hair were particularly prized, but the admirers got even more creative. One account tells of a woman who took one of his broken piano strings and turned it into a bracelet. One woman was so enamored with Liszt, she took home a cigar stump Liszt threw away. She picked it up from the gutters and had it encased in a locket surrounded with the monogram FL in diamonds. Even wearing it in courtly environments, despite its sickly odor. This environment of adoring fans would produce a veritable insanity. The most comparable moment to Listomania in history would come over a hundred years later with the rise of English musical sensation, The Beatles. In the early 1960s, the boy band traveled the world in a wildly popular musical tour. Massive audience of mostly high-pitched and screaming female fans would fawn over the mop-top musicians. The press called it Beatlemania, a word they thought would describe the almost godlike worship, which was comparable to religious fervor. John Lennon famously quipped that the band had become more popular than Jesus, and he really wasn't too far off the mark. The band was so popular, many of their performances couldn't be heard over the cheering of adoring young fans. Despite their similarities, there's one striking difference between Beatlemania and Listomania. Whereas cultural commentators thought of the Beatles hysteria as a popular movement, there are many in the Romantic period which saw listomania as closer to a medical condition. The phrase listomania was used interchangeably as another phrase, list fever, which seemed to imply a viral medical condition. The term mania was much more medically connotative in the 1800s than it was in the middle of the 20th century. Today, mania can apply to something as small as a yo-yo craze 
But back in the day, a mania was considered to be, by many, a genuine contagious medical condition, with some critics even recommending measures to immunize the public. But this isn't the only suspect medical condition to be inspired by artists. The Stendhal Syndrome is a psychosomatic condition where individuals experience a rapid rise in heartbeat, confusion, and in some cases fainting and even hallucinations after being exposed to art or experiencing something of outstanding beauty. The name comes from the French author Stenhal, who experienced the symptoms when visiting the Basilica of Santa Croce in Florence. He describes, I was in a sort of ecstasy, absorbed in the contemplation of sublime beauty. I had palpitations of the heart. Life was drained from me. I walked with the fear of falling. A more recent and more dramatic account of the Stenhall syndrome was in 2018 when a museum goer had a heart attack while viewing Botticelli's painting, The Birth of Venus. If the Stenhall syndrome is a real thing, it doesn't always have to be dangerous. Think of the 2010 viral video featuring Paul Vazquez, which is commonly referred to as Double Rainbow, oh my god, it's a double rainbow all the way. Whatever this reaction is, it's gotta be in the same ballpark as whatever the Stenhall syndrome is. Maybe there were many 19th century women who looked on Franz Liszt with the same intensity as Stenhall did with the cathedral, or Vasquez with the double rainbows. Oh, oh, wow. One thing is almost definitely for sure. These women probably didn't look at him with the same intensity as he aged. Old age really did no favors to this famously beautiful musician. 